Well, make a joyful noise to the Lord. Today we've gathered together for worship and what a privilege it is to worship God together. Uh, I'm Pastor Dan Snyder at First Presbyterian Church of Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and thank you so much for joining us today in our online worship. If this is your first time with us, I hope that you'll reach out and let us know who you are. We'd love to be able to connect with you and help you know a little bit more about who we are as a congregation. Thanks for joining. Well, the summer is a time of vacation and this little segment is being recorded a little early because today on August 18th and the week of the 18th, I'm still away. It's my practice um, to take four weeks of my vacation all at one time. Uh, by, the, by doing that, I'm really excited to get back by the time uh, that time, uh, that vacation time is done. So, uh, so today we're recording this, I'm recording this ahead of time uh, so that uh, you can hear a little bit about what's coming up and why we've chosen to do today. Andy is also away on vacation, which means that Claire and I put our heads together and thought about uh, our sermon that you have, you maybe already saw earlier in the year. We have uh, a couple of those sermons that are our favorites. This one in particular got a lot of really good response. We always enjoy preaching together. And uh, this is one of those where we shared uh, the pulpit. Um, in this sermon, you really get to hear our hearts and our passion for who we are as a congregation and uh, what it is that really makes our hearts sing. So I hope you'll enjoy this again. Um, I hope you know that you're in really good care uh, during the month of August. Uh, we've had some guest preachers. We've had some of our retired pastors on call. Uh, Pastor Claire has done a wonderful job. And uh, it's really good, good for me to belong to a, a team as strong as this one. So today as we worship God, we, uh, we remember that God has called us as a church to be a community together, a community of joy. Our main purpose is to allow the Lord Jesus Christ to mature our hearts so that we can be those people sent out into the world to represent God, to bear the image of God so that when people meet us, they say, that's what God must be like. And you'll hear more about that as we worship together today. So let's worship God. prayer we ask of God. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. In the prayer of confession, we consider our debts and ask for God's forgiveness. Let us pray. God of grace, your good news is for all people. Forgive us when we limit it to people like ourselves. Your grace is for all people. 
Forgive us when we hoard it, unable to believe in your abundance. Your love is for all people. Forgive us when we ignore it, fearing that we might be unworthy of your grace. Move us to see the world as you see it, bursting at the seams with your mercy and your love. Jesus Christ satisfies each of our shortcomings. In Christ, we are given the full vision of love, peace, and justice. The good news is for you. God claims us, Christ welcomes us, and the Spirit enlivens us. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and restored. Amen. Let's join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, by your Holy Spirit, open us to your word so that we may hear the call to be disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from the book of Isaiah. Listen for what the Spirit is saying to the church. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is God who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and assert, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. That's how this chapter of Isaiah begins, and the words are familiar because we read them in Advent. The Israelites have been living in exile for a long time, away from their home and away from their place of worship. And here, the prophet Isaiah shares a hopeful vision for their future. A desert highway will be built so the Israelites can return home. The trouble is the Israelites are exhausted. They're tired. They're worn down from having lived in exile for decades. 
The people are having trouble envisioning a new future. They wonder if maybe the Lord has looked over them. They wonder if maybe another God might have their best interests at heart. So the prophet Isaiah reminds the people who God is by pointing to the wonders of creation. Look to the heavens, Isaiah tells them. Look up at the sky. Do you see the sun and the stars and the moon? Are any of them missing? Have any of them floated away? No. God created the moon and every star. God named each of them. God claimed them. God will never pass over them. In the same way, God created the people of Israel. God named the people and claimed them. God will never look them over. God will never abandon them. The same is true so many generations later. Each day, God counts us off, calls us each by name, and never looks over a single one. People can get weary when they've been overlooked or unseen. It takes tremendous amount of energy and courage for an oppressed, invisible, silent people to be heard and seen in our culture. Others can become weary by being overly seen and cannot find rest. Well, Black History Month is a time when we remember the stories of a weary and overlooked people. And today we want to read a poem by Tracy Dant. She's an African-American fiction writer and poet from St. Louis. And her poem gives us a glimpse into the way that naming assured black people of safety and love at home. The poem is entitled, A Twice Named Fam Family by Tracy Dant. I come from a family that twice names its own. One name for the world, one name for home. Liddy, Jolie, Dor, Bud, Bobby, B, Puddin, Cluster, Lindy, Money, Duddy, Vess, Yes. We are a two named family. Because somebody way back knew you needed a name to cut chitlins in, a name to put your feet up in, a name that couldn't be fired, a name that couldn't be denied a loan, a name that couldn't be asked to go through anyone's back door. Somebody way back knew we needed names to be loved in. I come from a family that twice names its own. One name for the world, one name for the home. One name for the world, one name for home. Liddy, Jolie, Dor, Bud, Bobby, B, Puddin, Cluster, Linda, Money, Daddy, Vess, yes, we are a two-name family. A two-named family. Because somebody way back knew you needed a name to cook chitlins in. Knew you needed a name to cook chitlins in. A name to put your feet up in. A name that couldn't be fired. A name that couldn't be denied alone. A name that couldn't be asked to go through anyone's back door. Somebody way back. Somebody way back. Knew we needed names. To be loved in. To be loved in. Well, our congregation, this church, has had at least two names that I know of. We used to be the English Presbyterian Church. It signified that the services here would be done in the English language. And then later, we were called First Presbyterian Church. As Claire and I think about our hopes and the vision of this congregation, we chose both a home name and a public name name to describe our vision, a name that shapes who we are together and who we want to be for the world. I hope that our home name, our inside name, that familiar name, I hope it is Union. 
There are so many reasons to be divided in the world. Nationality and background, education, political convictions, the Chiefs or the 49ers, or maybe you're in too much to spare about the Eagles to even care. There are so many reasons to be divided, but the ritual of our weekly worship points to our union. The latest edition of Presbyterian Outlook points out that churches are a place of promise and possibility. Besides faith communities, where else in our society do people of diverse political perspectives voluntarily gather? Through the waters of our baptism, we are united with Christ and we are united with one another. We belong to one another. Our theology makes this really bold claim. Our ties to the household of God are even stronger than the ties to our families. Our ties to the household of God are way more important than our ties to our countries, to our political parties, to our sports teams. Because we are united to Christ, we are joined to one another, connected, yoked. We are a union. We are united within this congregation, and we are united with the whole cloud of witnesses. Some of our rituals in worship remind us of our union with the entire body of Christ, rituals like the Apostles' Creed and the Lord's Prayer and the celebration of communion. We are a union with the whole church, past and present. Our family name is Union. The name I like to think of when I think about our congregation, our home name, would be family. More and more, I believe that faith communities like our church are the last places in our society where all generations can come together and participate fully as equals. So the name I would hope would be the name for our inside would be our would be the name family. Over the past few years, I have really enjoyed watching how children are being welcomed in worship. They are not here as guests that we send away. They are allowed to wiggle and make noises that children make. I've enjoyed watching the people here in person take a deep interest in what is important to our children and just to allow them to be children. A recent story that illustrates this in such a tender way for me is the relationship that has grown between Everett and Mr. Clem. A few uh, months ago, we had a response song that we did in person that involved drums. And if you know Clem Lichty, you know that he's a drummer. And that fascinated Everett and Everett got up the courage to come down front and meet Mr. Clem who was very hospitable and wasn't the kind of drummer that said don't touch my drums but allowed him to come over and get to know his drums. And so Everett a few weeks ago came running down the center aisle on his way to worship arts and he had an orange card in his hand that we use for prayer requests but any of you that know that have been here in person know that those cards are also good for doodling and writing notes. And Everett wrote a little note on the back of that orange card and handed it to Mr. Clem and gave him a hug. And the card said, Mr. Clem, you're my favorite. And then later on asked Mr. Clem, Mr. Clem, do you think we could have a play date sometime? <laughs> when Clem told me this story, he said, Dan, I haven't had a play date in a long time. I don't know what we'll do. And we agreed that if it involved drums, I'm sure both Mr. Clem and Everett would have a great time together. I want this church to be a place where children can remember the first adult outside of their family and school that knew their name. I want this church to be a place where youth and young adults can remember being welcomed into adulthood here in this congregation. I believe that the purpose of this church is to be intergenerational family. 
Dan and I have shared our hopes for our family names, those familiar names we know each other by. And we also have hopes for our public names, for people in the community, how they know First Presbyterian Church. I hope our public name is partner. When folks outside of this church think of First Presbyterian of Lancaster, I hope their name for us is partner. Folks who were able to attend the first night of the officers retreat saw all the energy of our partnerships. There will be a mission gathering in March where you can learn about ways you can be involved with our mission partners. We recognize the good work being done by nonprofits right here in Lancaster City and in the county and around the globe, and we partner with them. We are generous with our financial gifts. We remember them in our prayers, and we offer our time and our energy. In the scripture passage from Isaiah, part of the trouble was that the people couldn't even envision a new future. They were tired, and they were running out of hope. And so Isaiah reminds them that the God who created the whole world will renew and strengthen the people as they work for a new future. In worship, we are reminded that God sustains and strengthens us. And from worship, we are sent to be the body of Christ for the world. We are sent out to do the faithful work of making this world look a little more like God's kingdom. And the way we do that is by being a partner. Well, Jesus calls us salt and light. And my hope would be that the outside world would know us as salt and light. It's no secret that I want this church to be the kind of place that when people meet us, they think to themselves, that's what God must be like. This is what it means to bear the image of God to the world. This is what Jesus was talking about when he said, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine to the glory of God. Now you hear me talk about this in terms of virtues, the virtues of the Christian life, like love, joy, peace, patience, and kindness. And today I want to add curiosity to that list. You know, God takes great interest in us. I like to imagine God as curious about who we are and what interests us. And all those things that we love to do and love to talk about, even those things that we discover that are exciting to us, but really boring to other people, you know what I mean. God leans in to hear us talk about those things and do those things with us. So our curiosity is demonstrated through our questions. The early church saw itself as the guardian of the questions. Some time in the Reformation, when it was important for the church to be seen and heard, we became the guardian of the answers. And I think it's time in our society once again for us to become the guardian of the questions. Because as we ask questions in the world, it invites faith conversations and it invites people to discover their own faith. I have three questions I want to suggest that would be a sample of some of the questions we would begin to ask as we live and move and have our being in the world. One of those questions might be, what attributes of God do you think is most important in our world today? Imagine asking, asking that to a friend outside the church. Another might be, what problems are we currently facing in our society that are so beyond our solving that you think we would truly need God. A third comes to mind when I think about our recent podcast. If you listen to our last podcast, we, uh, Rabbi Jack Paskoff told us what he thought uh, he wished Christians knew about Jews or what Christians knew about Israel. I think a third question for us today could be, what do you wish Christians knew about Christians? Imagine asking that to people outside of this church. Asking questions like these will shape our curiosity and they will also keep us humble. 
They will draw out faith-filled conversations in our world. And they might just leave people thinking, that's what God must be like. Lift up your eyes on high, people of First Presbyterian Church, and see who created the moon and the stars. God created them and claimed them and knows them by name. God created us and claims us and knows us by our many names. First Press. FPC. The English Presbyterian Church. Union. Family. Partner. Salt and light. Beloved. Heaven thundered and the world was born. Life begins and ends in the dust you fall. Faith commanded and the mountains move. Fear is losing ground to our hope in you. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and shall be done freedom conquered all our chains undone sin defeated Jesus has overcome mercy triumphs when the third day dawns Darkness was denied when the storm was gone. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be done. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on. shall be impossible your kingdom reigns unstoppable we'll shout your praise forevermore jesus our god unstoppable nothing shall be impossible your kingdom reigns unstoppable we'll shout your praise forevermore jesus our god unstoppable nothing shall be your kingdom reigns unstoppable We'll shout your praise forevermore Jesus our God unstoppable Let's pray together. God of grace, you delight in creating beauty. You delight in relationships of love and in teaching us your will and your ways. We come before you with the prayers in our hearts and we offer our very hearts to you that we may live according to your will. As we look to a new school year, we offer our thanksgiving for wonder and for wisdom 
for humor, and for encouragement. We pray for children all around the globe, and we offer you our gratitude for their playfulness, for their curiosity, and for their joy. We pray for roofs over the heads of children and for good food on their tables. We pray for true friendships and for gracious adults who protect them. God, grant that all children might grow in your love. We pray for teenagers and for young adults. We offer you our thanksgiving for the ways the young expand boundaries and question authority. We offer our gratitude for the ways they encourage all adults to serious reflection. We thank you for the questions they have and for the gifts you are nurturing in them. We pray that you would give teens and young adults courage as they engage in critical learning and discovery. In their learning, help them to identify the multitude of ways that you are at work in the world. God, we pray for those who you have called to instruct and to shape our children as they grow and mature. We pray for those called to teach, lead, coach, and mentor. We pray for administrators, bus drivers, and cafeteria workers, for custodians and coaches, for counselors and school board members. Grant your wisdom and generous spirit. Inspire them with creativity and commitment. Provide opportunities for their refreshment and renewal, and help us to appreciate their efforts and to treat them with respect. God of all ages, just as we pray for children, we also pray for adults. Guide us as we endeavor to lead faithful lives in our homes and in our workplaces. Help us to admire the imagination of children. Help us to learn from the resilience of teenagers. Help us to listen to the wisdom of young adults. God, even when we are no longer students, guide us to keep learning, to keep learning about your creation, to keep learning about your word, to keep learning about your love and faithfulness. And through our growth, Enable us to share your wisdom and love in word and by example. God of grace, remind us that we are one community of your beloved, responsible for one another and gifted with each other. Hear our prayers, for we ask them in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
all of you who wait upon the Lord, who follow the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, may your strength be renewed. May you rise up as if you have wings like eagles. May you run in the path of God and not grow weary. May you walk in God's ways and never faint. May you be united in faith, despite your differences, partners with those who want the world to be a better place. May you be a family to one another, and may all you meet think, that's what God must be like. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.